Thank you to the HRC for having me tonight. It's an honor to be recognized by an organization that tire tirelessly fights for us year round. It's not always this glamorous. I've seen firsthand the work they've been doing for the past 12 years. <clears throat> but let's be honest, I'm as surprised that I'm here as you are. I don't know who made that decision, but thanks. <laughs> I don't get awards very often, so I said yes. <laughs> Matt Bomer clearly is busy, so um, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Oh, thank you. I Venmoed you, make sure it went through. Um, <laughs> visibility is a peculiar thing, isn't it? There I was on the gayest show in the world for six years, surrounded by queer joy, show tunes, Madonna, Ryan Murphy, and yet I didn't come out publicly, and I wasn't particularly visible for anyone outside of that set. So the message of the show was a little lost on me, clearly. Growing up and wanting to be in the entertainment business, I had long accepted that that part of myself was never going to be something that I showed publicly, because, you know, old school, that's just the way it is. I wanted to be a star. But being on that set in my early 20s, where acceptance was not just preached, it was practiced every single day by the crew, the cast, and the fans, it was only a matter of time the gay was gonna come out. <laughs> but throughout that show, I learned the importance of visibility. We met people from all around the world who saw themselves on TV every single week, often watching with their families, and whichever letter they identified it with within the LGBTQIA plus community, there was a character for them. I was no different growing up. I was desperate for any movie, show, book, anything that had a gay storyline. But when you're in that, when you're in the thing that is representing, it's easy to forget how important that is. People need to see you exactly as you are because all it takes is one person to see themselves in your story and they find a connection they never knew was possible. That can be life affirming and it can be life saving. I'm lucky, I come from a great and supportive family. I have incredibly supportive friends and coworkers. And if you are lucky enough to be able to find your people to help guide you, to help you find your voice, which sometimes can take a long time, and that's okay, we're all on our own journey, then maybe you can distill all of that, all those lessons, and become the accumulation of your incredibly curated collective. I've had the privilege of working and having some of these guides in my life, whether I've known them personally or admired them from afar, like Ryan Murphy, Cleve Jones, Amber Riley, Jenna Ushkowitz, Telly Kusakis, Justin Sams, Chris Colfer, Alex Newell, Ken Jones, Frank Ocean, and Naya Rivera, who was so terrified at one point that Perez Hilton was going to out me that she had to come to Jesus, because let's be honest, I wasn't being very discreet like I thought I was. And she taught me how to become an advocate for myself and to take control of my own narrative. Sometimes it takes a village, and my village saw me and made sure that I saw myself. Visibility isn't just about putting yourself out there. It's about being seen, and it's not just about being seen. It's about making sure that everybody sees you just as you want to be seen. And it's our responsibility as a collective to make sure that people know they have that same support, especially with what's been going on as of late in the world. <clears throat> and speaking of, because I'm in Texas, and I'm from Texas, my home state, yep, mm-hmm. Guys, Texas, where Abbott and Paxton make the Vatican and the Pope look like they're running a hippie commune. <laughs> like, word? Where LGBT people are seen as more of a threat than guns. How many people were killed or harmed seeing a drag show? I've only ever been drunk and close to some fake boobs. I don't know. But yes, let's use those hard-earned tax dollars on fixing problems that don't exist, except in the minds of Puritans trying to take us back to the ideals of the Dark Ages. Thank you, Abbott. That is exactly why the HRC is so incredibly important. I mean, the amount of cognitive dissonance going on when you're trying to pass anti-drag bills just like three blocks away from the drag shows happening in Austin. And they're very good drag shows. You should see them, they're wonderful. It's mind boggling. Like, have they actually been outside their place of work or their homes 
it's super gay. Dallas, where I'm from, really gay. Houston. And it's beautiful. They don't want lesbians. They don't want the gays, bisexuals, trans people, drag queens, women with any bodily autonomy. But bitch, everything is bigger in Texas, including those communities. And here's the thing, Texas is queerer than ever. We heard some of those numbers earlier, right? And no amount of homophobic comments recycled from the 90s and repackaged against the trans community is gonna change that. Now, if there's one thing I know about this community, it's we know how to organize, protect, and advocate for each other because we always have. And right now, our queer trans siblings of color need us more than ever. And so we're not about to stop. So thank you to the politicians in this state who fight against those assholes every day and the future politician in this room <laughs> who are actually advocating and protecting our kids. Thank you to the HRC for looking out for us, all of us, every single day. Thank you to my date tonight, Houston Royalty, the owner of Wigs and Grace. If you need a wig, you know who to go find. Um, as famously seen on RuPaul's Drag Grace, Gloria. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you know, you know. Thank you to my family. Thank you to my boyfriend, Austin. And thank you to Houston for giving us Beyonce. Good night. Thank you. Yeah.